Good evening. Happy to have you all here. I'm Kimberly Nightingale, and I'm the Executive Director of the St. Paul Almanac. I was going to ask in the kitchen if we could turn the sound off, please. Thank you. It's good to see all of you tonight. Uh, if you have never seen a St. Paul Almanac, here it is. And we put a new book out every year. Our new one, 2014, will be coming out September 12th. And our big party is right here at the Black Dog Cafe. So if you want to come and buy a book and get to know some of the authors, uh, come and show up here. It's a free party, and we have a big reading uh, next door at the Clouds and Water Zen Center. And there's um, lots of artwork from the new book that will be at the AZ Gallery. This is this year's book, and it's been out for almost a year. Um, if you'd like to purchase one, you can purchase it right here at the Black Dog. The St. Paul Almanac is a literary organization, and we create opportunities for understanding, learning, and building community through sharing each other's stories. And we'd like to thank our sponsors tonight. This activity is made possible in part by funds provided by the Lower Town Future Fund of the St. Paul Foundation. And we'd also like to thank Nigel Perry. He will be doing some of the um, filming tonight and also St. Paul Neighborhood Network. Shelly behind us is filming this and it'll be airing on SPNN. And Dan Tilson is doing our sound. So if we could give them all a big shout out. <laughs> and a big thank you to Black Dog Cafe too for hosting this every month. <clears throat> So tonight's show is curated by Marcy Rendon, and Marcy is an enrolled member of the White Earth Anishinaabe Nation. She's a mother, grandmother, writer, and sometimes performance artist. She's a playwright, poet, and freelance writer. She's a former recipient of the Lofts Inroads Writers of Color Award for Native Americans, and she studied poetry under Anishinaabe writer Jim Northrup. She's won many awards. One was a St. Paul Company's Leadership in Neighborhoods grant to create a viable Native presence in the Twin Cities theater community. And she received a Jerome Fellowship from the Minneapolis Playwright Center. Her first children's book, Pow Wow Summer, was published by Carol Rhoda in 1996. And her second children's book, The Farmer's Market, Families Working Together, was released in the spring of 2001. Please welcome Marcy Rendon. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, thank you all for coming out. I know that there's um, some big events happening in the Indian community tonight. Um, they're having like ceremony and prayers because of the Supreme Court decision that um, set back the ICWA Act. Um, and the Supreme Court decided that this little girl should go live with the white adoptive family instead of with her Native American dad. So I know that the Indian community in the Twin Cities is doing a lot of things, and I think a lot of them are happening at the same time as this event. Um, when I was asked to curate this show, one of the things that I thought about was that before contact, as Anishinaabe people, we didn't sit down and write poetry. Um, one, we didn't have a written language. Um, so th our poems were actually songs that came to us in dreams or that um, came through us through visions. Um, one of the earliest books um, that recorded some of them is this book by Gerald Vis Visner, that came out, I think, in the late 1960s. And this is what he says. The Anishinaabeg did not have written histories. The past lived as an event in visual memories and oratorical gestures. Dreams played in endless woodland identities between the conscious and unconscious worlds of the people. I am a bird. If you wish to know me, you must seek me in the clouds. The Anishinaabe orator, Kichkagam told the Englishmen, military officers, who had asked him to explain his position in the new world. Kichkamung responded to the question with a personal woodland song. The song poems of the Anishinaabe are imaginative events, magical and spiritual flights, and intuitive 
lyrical images of woodland life. So one of them is, the first to come, epithet among the birds, bringing the rain, crow is my name. The Anishinaabe hear music not only in the human voice, but in the sounds of animals and trees and in ice cracking on the lakes. The people are surrounded with what is alive in dreams and visions, in stories and in ceremonial events. The Anishinaabe are never alone. And so when I was putting together the performance for tonight, I invited people to come and perform who not only write poems, but also create music. And our first performer is gonna be Jake Vinio. Um, he's 14, he's from Duluth, um, enrolled at Fond du Lac? Yes? Oh, Mille Lacs. Um, and his connection to St. Paul is that the family comes down here to Axman's quite frequently. And if you follow the Vinio family on Facebook, you'll, you'll learn about that. So, Jake?
Hello. Gotta read a little poetry. This is called Free Writing 3, or Why Do I Deserve to Not Remember? I have trouble remembering things. My social environment is my crutch. My mother tells me I used to love playing with those ridiculous tiny plastic stoves meant for children, with their parents always on the work with their alternate jobs and lives. I don't remember it all too well. I wish I could remember. Maybe. 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 My memory is a dead bird found outside my house on a frigid, windy day. Lay it in a wicker basket, hang it on the handle of an umbrella, and let it go. The sky shall bury it, consume it in a gentle, swift, fluid thought. And as that bird may decompose, it shall do so far from me how it was meant to be. This is called A Sigh From Below. <laughs> I am the river you skip stones upon as a child. Those were always good days. I would remind your feet of where they really belonged. You skipped rocks across me, teasing my skin at intervals which only fate could decide. The sun would sink in envy. I didn't want to let you go. I would pull at your toes in eager frustration yet you left. I still keep the stones you gave me. I am the stones you skipped upon the river when you were a child. I watched you helplessly as you cast me into the depths of the water, feeling myself lessen. Now I must wait. Wait for time to pity me. Wait to regain myself along beach sides where I truly belong. I have been poisoned by an external source, no longer natural. You ate me, and I envy you for it. I am you as a child, yet I am you no more. I didn't realize I was fading until I was already gone. I do not understand what you've become, but we are not the same. We used to coexist. I could play while you could work. You forgot me. Come back to us, the river, the stones, and I. Come back, someday. We will wait for you and you alone. Take your shoes off. Feel the infinite imperfections on the cold, dusk beach. Pick up a rock. Feel yourself step back, planting your foot back harder into the sand. Feel the pebbles and the clay filter through your toes, anticipating your next move. Feel yourself throw. Feel yourself throw the rock, a blur composed of the forgotten melodies of your childhood, of our childhood. Watch the rock pull itself away from you, loosening, breaking the boundaries of distance and time. A sigh from below, never leave us again. called We. Weathered, cracked, body and soul, caged just for us, lost, found. Run to the corner of your cage, the corner closest to home, your real home. Don't struggle, don't worry, this is your home now. Weathered, cracked, body and soul, staring as we pass. Guilt, denial, acceptance. 
Eye contact is fractured. Keep paving paths as we are all meant to do. Weathered, cracked, body and soul, forgotten in a cage. Thank you. Another round of applause for Jake. Okay, I'm always stunned by like how you can read it off a phone. Um, I know that some of you came because my granddaughter Seguan um, is on the flyer to perform. Um, she got sick, and so she isn't here. I'll read um, her poem that's in the St. Paul Almanac. It's called Home. You say to leave things up to chance. However, it's my future that I want to enhance. Whether you want to, it's all a game we got to play, and you got to fight hard like America on D-Day. What people don't know today is that you can get vast amounts of knowledge from books. But all these kids try drugs and are hooked, walking down the ghetto street where broken homes are as common as broken glass. And the underpaid teacher is rubbing their headaches, looking around their empty class, knowing, just knowing, their students are out the building, around the corner, selling drugs. Because at home, there is no such things as kisses and hugs. Home is a small, dilapidated house with the front door gone, and every kid on the block has a dad who's an ex-con. They watch as their life and dreams slowly crumble away, even though the media and the government says it all will be OK. But they know in their shattered community where they stand, beaten, yet still standing, hurt, it would take a lot more than just their voices to be heard. Us lone soldiers who live in MP3 players, because we can't afford no iPods, and spiral notebooks are beginning to end. Instead, we are being replaced by fake gangsters and sex idols that the media recommend. All these mixed signals are being sent and creating mixed feelings. You see, it's our creativity that the money's been stealing. And then she wanted to send her phone with me. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I didn't, you know, that ain't going to happen, kid. Um, our next performer, oh, I should say that what I wanted to do is get a whole string of young performers up here because the songs that were in the book that I read from before are like from the late 1800s and the early 1900s. And the, the young people that are creating songs and poems today are the ones that are going to be read in books like that one in the next millennium. Um, the next poet, um, Marissa Carr, is like just one of the most incredible performers that I've seen here in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, Marissa? Sorry. Um, if anyone here has a blue Volkswagen station wagon, license plate 576DJK, um, it was parked on a slope and it rolled into a truck. Oh. So if that's you, I'm really sorry, but I think the owner of the truck would love it if you could go outside and take a look. So if that. <laughs> Thanks. Wow, that is terrible news. Um, and also, Marcy gave me a really nice introduction, but one I hope I can live up to. So let me distract you. Did you guys like Seguin's poem? Yeah. Did you guys like Jake? I thought he did a really great job. OK, well, um, like Marcy said, I am Marissa Carr. That is me. And I am going to read a couple poems and sing a couple songs. And that's what I'm going to do. I also have a phone. And I used to really kind of hate on people who read poetry off their phones. Like, oh, wow, you're really cool. You have an iPhone. And then I got one. And <laughs> I mean, 
were really useful. We were swaddled at birth in secondhand tragedy, threadbare but still intact. Borrowed, stolen, or passed down, we slip it on like an old coat that becomes a straight jacket, that becomes a shroud. Wear it with the same desperate tensity that makes us thumb our bruises and linger long after everyone else has gone home in the places that hurt us the most. The same that makes us refuse medicine for the fear that we won't be healed, for fear of not knowing how to be without the chips on our shoulders that have grown down into our bones for fear of success or failure that plucks away at the possibility of hope. When my brother and I were young, we patched each other's scrapes and punctures, packed them with cotton balls and sealed them with masking tape, always so carefully, because when he broke his hand, my fist used to ache. This is how I know that when you close a wound that's never been cleaned, it festers and burns. My generation has learned to wear scars with cockeyed smiles that pop up on autopilot when friends or bold strangers ask, what the hell happened to you? Crack uncomfortable jokes and laugh too loud so they'll know we have nothing to hide, that the railroad tracks of tissue that traverse our limbs are too old to matter, that they stopped hurting years ago, that we're fine. But sometimes they still keep me up at night. And when I finally sleep, I dream of atomic bombs, unjust wars, the middle passage, boarding school. They didn't happen to me, but I heard the stories. They say forgiveness brings peace, but peace is fickle. It never stays with any of us for long. So we go to bed early, stay up all night, fill pipes, empty bottles, do yoga, go to meetings, cut wrists, go to the gym, stay home, stay away, pop pills, meditate. Look for ways out from under old hurts that seep like South Minneapolis arsenic into the soil that nourishes our roots. Maybe we can't help it that we poison the very things we try to sustain. Prick our fingers as we try to stitch our narratives from the threads of our own lives. Someone's child will carry these one day. Slip into them like old coats and say that it didn't happen to them, but they heard our stories. Thank you. Uh, now I'm going to do some singing. I hope. up as far as it's going to go. All right, I just figured out how to make this easier. <laughs> That's way better. <laughs> Sorry about that.
to pieces like shattered glass. I tried to try till I was broken fried to trade my heart for what I could not save, could not save. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I get for not checking my sound. It's Sunday morning and I'm waking up alone again. I tried hard to sleep last night, but for the longest time I couldn't. There were no sheep to count, so I just stared out of my window, watching headlights roll by and wondering where they're going. Mm. The saddest time of night is after the after party. Come home and turn the lights on to a dark empty apartment. Slip out of my high heels and wash all of my makeup off. Crawl into bed and pull the covers up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Sunday morning again, and I'm frying up my eggs and bacon. Thought I'd feel better in the morning, but I was mistaken. Turn on the radio and hope they play my favorite song. I don't feel like dancing alone, so I gotta sing along to da 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 da. Da 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 Thanks. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you. This is a lot of up and down, but I think I'm making it work, I hope. Um, so I'm going to do one more poem, and then I will relinquish the microphone to our next amazing performer. My heart is indigenous land, unseated. I sign treaties with no man. I don't need one to need me, love me, adore me, beat me, cheat on me, strip my resources and leave me, only to return when he learns the worth of what's still left beneath me. I can't. My heart is indigenous land raped over years and years of takeover that made over the earth into someone she doesn't know. Now the color of scar tissue is her skin tone. My heart is indigenous land torn apart and carved by chain link fences topped with wire barbs that dig in deep and leave ragged welts and train track marks on legs and stomachs and chests and arms. My heart is not broken, but it's come close. Years and years of strip mining, taking liberties and making holes is nothing sacred not 
to you my heart, which is indigenous land, unseated. I make treaties with no man. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Marissa. Another hand for Marissa. I kind of put her on the spot because I said the evening is Anishinaabe songs, poems. And I said, so if you got something to sing, bring it. Um, she's a, most of the time she does her poetry up here. Um, and then we have a guest, Raphael, whose last name I won't even begin to try to pronounce. Um, and Raphael is going to sing us one song. Thanks for letting me borrow your guitar, Marissa. Anytime. My mom and my aunties have been doing show business for about 60 or 70 years, and I'm hearing their, my Aunt Elizabeth's voice right now going, let me tell you something, Zulong. You never go up on stage unprepared. <laughs> you sh if somebody asks you to sing a song and you're not ready, you just say, now thank you. So. <laughs> So Marcy, I'm baking a big rule for you here. As I hear another auntie saying, Rafa, you never tell people you're not prepared on stage. <laughs> Let's see. I got sober around 1992. So this is a song I was singing back in the middle 80s when I was still getting paid to sing at bars for 75 bucks a night and all I could drink. And it's not one of my songs. And, I, and I'm winging it, so I hope I remember the chord progression. This is a Jimmy Buffett song called The Wino and I Know. Um, why did I think of it? Uh, a few months ago, uh, one of Marcy's nieces tagged me up on Facebook and said, post us one of your favorite songs. Post a song that says something about you. Post a song that speaks to you or says tells your story. So I thought, the wino and I know kind of told my narrative back then. The ice cream man, he's a hillbilly fan. Got 78 spanks, no. Walks down the street, shuffling his feet to a rhythm that only he knows. And I've seen him in so many places I saw him the night I was born In a Bourbon Street bar I received my first car From an old man so tattered and torn And the wino and I know The pain of back busting like the door-to-door -door salesman Knows his pains have been arranged Strange situation Wild occupation, living my life like a song. The coffee is strong at the Cafe du Monde. The donuts are too hot to touch. But just like a fool when those sweet goodies cool, I'll eat till I ate way too much. Cause I'm living on things that excite me. Be that pastry, lobster, or love. I'm just trying to get by, being quiet and shy, in a world full of pushing and shove. And though I know and I know the pain of back busting, like the farmer knows the pain of his pickup truck rusting. Strange situation, wild occupation. Living my life like a song. Sweet senorita, won't you please come with me? Back to the islands, honey, back to the sea. Back to the only place I'd rather be. 
And the wino and I know the joy of the ocean like the boy knows the joy of his milkshake in motion. Strange situation, wild occupation, living my life like a song. Yes, it's a strange situation. A wild occupation, living my life like a song. Thank you. There's some praise. Oh, I have a request. I just got a treatment less than a year ago when I wrote this song. People are telling me, you want to learn how to stay sober, you, you got to go out to the tree and pray and drop tobacco. And I said, oh, okay. Not really, know what the, not really knowing what the heck I was doing. So this is a true story that happened one day. And this song's called, We Got Praying Going On. I named it because I was so furious that day. And I told the story at least a dozen times this, that the same day, and everybody laughed at me, which got me even more pissed off. So about a year or two later, I finally told this story to an old buddy of mine who was living at Duluth at the same time, and he was so tickled. Oh, he'll, he actually named the song just because he went through my kitchen in my living room all afternoon going, we got praying going on here. So that's the name of the song. This is a true story. You see, there was going to be this big feast at my place of employment, so I wanted to get there early and help out. So at about 4 a.m. in the morning, I kind of lumbered down the front steps of my house and into my car. It was a cold day in up, Upper Michigan, and I knew the roads would be icy. So after I fired up the old powwow mobile, I decided it would be a good idea to ask my helpers for a safe trip. So I pulled out my old tobacco pouch and kind of moseyed on over to the tree on my front lawn. I dropped some tobacco in the eastern direction and thought good thoughts. And then I turned to the southern direction and thought good thoughts. Wishing well for everyone, even the people who annoyed me. Then I turned to the western direction and I asked for a good feast. That everything happened just as it should. It was about then a squad car drove by my house and came to a dead stop in front of my front lawn. Sorry. A couple of seconds later, there was this big old floodlight shining right in my face. Now, since I was asking for acceptance, I decided I would not speak my mind just yet, and I turned to the northern direction, hoping to avert the glare of the floodlight. Mr. Policeman was still in his vehicle when he asks me, Are you all right? Why, yes, I replied, politely and continued to pray as hard as I could. The next thing he asked me was, what are you doing? Praying, I said, trying real hard not to sound annoyed. But when he asked me what I was praying for, I had to grit my teeth, and through clenched jaws, I told him, the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things that I can. <laughs> well, this baffled my dedicated public servant, and as he pulled onto the driveway, he instructed me not to go anywhere. You just hang on a second, boy. So 
Saying a prayer to the Creator You never believe what happened to me So I'm a knee requesting backup And he's talking about Put down the tobacco and step away from the tree You gotta be kidding me, I thought Visions of being laughed at in jail for praying were running through my head. The officer, with flashlight in hand, approached the suspect, me, who held tobacco pouch in hand. Well, I held the pouch open as his flashlight hovered over the contents. You never knew what dangerous substances I may have had in my pouch. He then asked me for identification. Ooh, was I getting mad. But I rolled my eyes and groaned and handed him my driver's license. I'm telling myself, be calm. You do want to make it to work this morning. Mr. Policeman pointed to my house and asked me if that was my place of residence. Why, yes, I replied, thinking better of telling the darn fool the driver's license he held on his land plainly indicated my place of residence. You'll never believe what he did next. Saying a prayer to the Creator, you never believe what happened on my front lawn. So I'm a knee requested backup. And he was talking about down out South 12th Street, we got praying going on. I did mention this is a true story, right? I wanted to laugh at this man, but I was just too outraged. The officer actually spoke the words, oh, we got praying going on here, into his walkie talkie. Two minutes later, however, my outrage turned to fear as two more squad cars pulled into my lawn. Being the criminal outbreak of the evening, Escanaba, Michigan's finest, had shown up to protect and serve. Well, they ran my driver's license through the computer to make sure I wasn't some dangerous criminal. After that, they wanted to make sure my auto insurance and registration was current and in my name. Then they shine their flashlights inside of my vehicle in search of concealed weapons. Well, about 10 minutes had gone by before they were convinced I was not a menace to society and I was free to go on my way. But doesn't it make you wonder about practicing spirituality in the land of the free? Saying a prayer to the Creator Said I'll accept whatever you got for me Better be careful what I ask for Cause I got Put down the tobacco and step away from the tree You gotta be kidding me If I had mouthed off he had probably taken me in But you know what I wanted to tell that red cop redneck cop. Something about how his daughter liked me. But... We got praying going on. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Raphael. So our next performer is Mark Erickson. Um, I've known Mark probably as long as I've known anybody except for my kids here in the Twin Cities. Um, he um, sings on the drums, sings in power drums. Um, tonight he's brought his hand drum. 
Um, so he's enrolled at Red Lake, and you're enrolled at White Earth. Okay. So much for Red Lake. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, let me help you up here. Monty Duque. Kijabu Kwe Kwe Na? You should. Kimono Tagos. What's the difference between uh, praying in church and praying in jail? In jail, you really mean it. <laughs> I, I just thought of that listening to uh, Raphael. <laughs> oh, um, I guess I got some, uh, I got a couple songs here that, uh, that, the, that the, young, the young men are playing this millennium. I'll sing a couple of them, and uh, we'll take it from there, I hope. So here's another one. <laughs> See, these are all these are all in my memory, and uh, so I got to remember them on the spot. That's all. <laughs>
Several years ago, or a few years ago, a few years ago, I uh, was a recipient of a Minnesota State Arts Board grant to compose new traditional songs for powwows. And, uh, and, uh, and to teach the young people, young adults, to, to sing. So here's one of my compositions. Yeah. So I'm a father, a grandfather, father and a grandfather, and uh, and a singer. Um, so I learned. Uh, I started learning this uh, how to sing when I was a young adult, oh, 19, 20 years old. I was in the Marine Corps, and then uh, out in Hawaii, <laughs> and there was an Odawa in any uh, that. Uh, said, well, you got to learn this stuff, you know, the Matazewan, you know, the good life. You need to learn how, learn, learn your ways. So I started way back, oh, quite a few years, 30-some years ago, anyway. And uh, um, so anyway, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, and, and I've been lear learning the language. I'm... I'm kind of a baby talker, but um, I started singing to my daughter when she was a baby. And then more, more recently, with, with a little better Ojibwe, I started, I would sing, I sing to my grandchildren, especially when they're babies. <laughs> so uh, this is just kind of, uh, kind of what I do. So this will be the baby. <laughs> Oh, uh,
Miigwech, Mark. So I want to thank again all the performers. Um, I just think it's really important that as Native people, I mean, it's like we've always had our own voice and we've always had our own way of expressing ourselves and talking with our spirits, talking with our hearts. And today when, I mean, in the whole spoken word community, and there's this way of sort of taking on other people's traditions. But what I really wanted to do tonight was to show who we really are as Native people, as Anishinaabe people, and Raphael. No. <laughs> um, Cause he's from the East Coast. Um, I wanna thank you all for coming. And um, where'd Kimberly go? She went back there. So Kimberly is the editor of the St. Paul Almanac, and they're the ones that pull the show together. And each year there's a call for submissions um, for people to write in poetry or stories for the St. Paul Almanac. Um, so I just wanted to say that it's because of the, the St. Paul Almanac that we had this evening. Um, one last one. And again, this is from the last millennium. All around the sky, with my sound, I come to you. Miigwech, thank you all for coming out. Thank you.